but not the world in the church. Huh. Let me go to my main scripture. Jonah, the rebellious prophet. Chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it. For their wickedness is come before me. But Jonah arose to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and he found a sheep going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. <laughs> but the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea so, the, 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 so that the sheep was like to be broken, then the mariners were afraid and they cried every man unto his God and cast forth the, the, and cast forth the words that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the side of the ship, he laid and was fast asleep. Wow, the word of the Lord came to Jonah. Like the word of the Lord is coming to you. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Like the word of the Lord is coming to somebody this morning. The word of the Lord came to Jonah. Like the word of the Lord is coming to somebody this morning. How many times has the Lord spoken to you and you keep procrastinating? Mm. Now, God said, arise and go to Nineveh. When the word of the Lord came, he said, arise and go to Nineveh. See, when you hear the word of the Lord, you got to arise and take action. Yeah. He said, and the guy flee from the presence of God. See, in the presence of God, we receive instructions. In the presence of God, we receive directions. In the presence of God, we receive revelations. But hear this. Every instruction requires an action. Every instruction we receive from the presence of God requires an action. The action that you take requires a particular direction. Hear, hear this. I'm, I'm building something. Focus on me. Don't, don't, don't focus on them. <laughs> now, in the presence of God, we receive instruction. We receive revelation. We receive direction. Now, the instruction we receive from the presence of God requires an action. Yeah. Now, the action we take is motivated by a direction. The direction you take is as a result of your destination. I need to explain this. If I can use someone as an example. Okay. Can I get somebody to use an example? Okay, come to me. So, this is the presence of God. Now, take this key you are going to give it to my wife. So now, hold on. Now she's receiving instruction from the presence of God. Now this instruction requires her to take an action. The action that she's going to take, go, hold on. Now she's taking a direction. Why didn't she go that way? She's going this way because of her destination. So keep going. So she's taking a direction which is motivated by her destination. And when she gets to her destination, she needs to fulfill the instruction that she received from the presence of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. Now, help me, Lord. 
when a man refuses the instructions of God and begin to instruct himself, that man instructs himself into destruction. When a man refuses the direction of God and he begin to direct himself, he direct himself to destruction. You can learn from King Saul. He will not listen to God. He decided to listen to himself and he destroyed himself. When a man refuses the instruction of God, that man instructs himself to destruction. May we never refuse the instructions of God. But every word we receive from the presence of God requires an action. And that action is as a result of a direction we take going to the destination that we want to be. So the word of the Lord came to the guy in the presence of the Lord. And Bible says he arose from the presence of the Lord. He, he left the presence of the Lord and then he went to a place called Joppa. And found sheep going to Tarshish. Now, Joppa is a place of boarding. When he left the presence of God, he went to, let me say, the port. He went to, to the airport. He went to the port. Well, I mean, a place of boarding or the bus station, if I may say. And Bible says he found a bus that is going to Tarshish. He found a ship that is going to Tarshish. Listen, God is saying that go to Nineveh. Now the guy is going to Tashes. And, and when you go to Joppa, the place of boarding, the place of decision making, he found a ship that is going to the wrong direction. Um. Not every good door is a God door. Yes. Right. Not every good opportunity is a God opportunity. Right. When he got to the place, he found a ship. That is going to the wrong direction. And you will be like, oh man, I got a ship, I need to go with it. Yeah. It's going to the wrong direction that I'm going. So sometimes you find yourself in the assembly of the wicked. You find yourself among the peer pressure who are doing the wrong things and they compel you to do it. Yeah. Meanwhile, God is saying that go to Nineveh. He found a ship. Not every good door is a God door. Not every blessing is a blessing from God. Because the devil can also bless you. Hallelujah. The devil can present that woman and you will be like, man, she's the one that I had. I need to spend the rest of my life. The, 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 the devil can bring the brother and you will be like, oh, this is it. This is it. God is speaking. No. Before you choose, you need to seek the face of God. And you need to choose what God has already chosen for you. Because it is custom made. Hear this. I don't believe this. I don't, that is me. You may choose to disagree with me. I don't believe there is a sister out there who is not a marriage material. I don't believe there is a sister out there who doesn't have a man in the world. You know what? Because, see, the woman came out of a man. So, every man, there is a woman out of that particular man. So, you can't tell me you are not a wife material. Sometimes, based on our wrong choices, we find ourselves in a wrong relationship. Sometimes we choose before we go to God and we say, Lord, confirm it. No. God needs to confirm before you go ahead and then you choose it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Right. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. Yeah. They are plans of good, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. See, God has plans for you, but God will not plan for you. But for your plans to succeed, your plans must be in alignment with the plans of God. Huh. He says, search the scriptures. None of these shall be broken. None shall lack his mate. So don't tell me my kind of man is not out there. My kind of woman is not. It's wrong. Unless you are looking somewhere else. Unless you are going to Tarshish instead of going to Nineveh. Unless you are instructing your own self. But if the spirit of the Lord is leading you, he will lead you to that destiny helper that he has already created for you. 
we receive instruction from the presence of the Lord. Yeah. And that instruction requires an action. The guy was at Joppa. He, he came to Joppa, the place of boarding, the bus station, or let me say, well, Rogers Airport. At that particular place, there are a lot of flights. They are going to different destinations. But you see, the kind of flight you find yourself in is motivated by where you are going. Yeah. You don't just get to the port and then enter into any aircraft. You enter into the one that is going to your destination. Some of us, we are in the wrong aircraft. And it's taking us to the wrong destinations. But that is why the Lord sent me this morning. That the Lord will redirect your course. Hallelujah. The Lord will redirect your course. Joppa is a place of decision making. When he got to Joppa, there were a lot of ships. But he needed to decide which ship I will enter into. Do I get into a ship that is going to Nineveh or I get into a ship that is going to Tarshish? And some of us, we are at the point of decision making huh. regarding that business, regarding that contract, regarding that job, regarding that child who is on the streets. Hear this. I don't know about, I, I, I sense strong that there is a child in the family that is wandering on the street. There is a child that has run away from home to, you said tonight, this morning. Uh, this morning, as we rise up in prayer, we will redirect the course of the child home. That there might be a man who is not, I mean, fulfilling his husbandry right. He's not playing his role, like he's not taking his responsibility in the marriage. There might be a wife that is not loving as the word of the Lord commands her to be. But this morning, the Lord will redirect our course. Hallelujah. The Lord will redirect our course. So the guy got to Joppa, the place of decision making. Like I'm saying that some of you are at the point of decision making. And if you make the wrong decision, it will take you to the wrong destination. But may the Lord help us as we make this decision. May the Lord help you. May the Lord help you. Because this is a major decision that if you don't make it right, it will affect generations to come. It will not only affect you, but it will affect the entire family. This is a prophetic word to somebody. Be conscious of that decision you are about to make. Be conscious of that decision you are about to take. Don't say it is an individual matter. Don't say it is me, it is my choice, it is my decision. No. Uh, look at the family behind you. Look at the next generation that is coming behind you. Look at the brothers, the sisters, the children, and make that decision accordingly. Joppa is a place of boarding. It's a place that you file your flight course. Joppa is a place of direction. At Joppa, you have to take a direction. So you see, she, she was at Joppa. She turned her back. She took a decision. She took a direction. And that direction take her to her destination. This morning, the Lord would direct somebody to his or her destination. See, but verse 4, Bible says, but the Lord sent out a great windstorm, a great wind, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so the ship was about to be broken. Now, <laughs> wow. This morning, which direction is your ship going? Now, see the ship as a symbol of your life. See the sheep as a symbol of your family. See the sheep as a symbol of your marriage. See the sheep as a symbol of the ministry, shepherd's falls. Hallelujah. And the sheep is taking a particular direction. A Bible says, and the Lord caused, let me say, a wind to strike the sheep, to strike the marriage, to strike the business, to strike the family, to strike the ministry. Hallelujah. Why? Because the ship was going a wrong direction. God will bring the storm when you are off course. Hear this. It's not all the storms in your life that are caused by the devil. God will bring the storm when you are going the wrong direction. Bible says, and the Lord God caused a wind to blow. It is God. God was responsible for that storm. Yeah. 
In the life of, of Job, when God boasted in him, he said, have you found my servant Job? There is none like him. There is no one upright. He, he shunned evil and then he loved God. Now Job was like, do you think the guy loves you for loving sake? Is it not because you have placed a hedge around you? Now for the records, the devil knows those who have the hedge around them. Yeah. He knows. He, know, he can see that God has placed a hedge around you. So he said, no, the guy loves you because of the wall of fire around him. Just give me access. And the Lord did. But God said, his life is not in your hands. So the devil may be permitted to touch anything in your life, but not your life. Yeah. Yeah. So don't worry. Like the testimony, the devil was messing up with my mind. It was messing up with my body. It was messing up with my family. God may permit it, but the devil will not succeed. And the Lord is taking you through because of the testimony he wanted to share. God loves glory. His glory he shares with no man. So for the glory of the Lord to be revealed, he allows us to go through the storm, the test, so that we will stand in the congregation of the mighty and glorify the name of the Lord. Some of us may be in our stormy season. It's because God wants to get the glory. Yeah. Hallelujah. And that stormy season will not sink you. It will not sink you. He so said, when you go through the waters, when you go through the fires, if it's not there, the fire may have drowned you by now. Yeah. If it's not there, the, 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 the waters may have drowned you by now. The fire may have, give me a word, burned you by now. Yeah. And now you will be ashes. Your name will not even be remembered no more. But thank God you are alive. You are alive because he is going with you. You are alive because he has not finished with you. Because he has the final say in your life. The doctor does not have the final say in your life. The, the, the attorney does not have the final say in your life. It is God who has the final say in your life. So hear this somebody. Yes, Lord. The Lord will open my eyes to see somebody opening um, um, a document and after opening the document, the person is sharing tears. And this document happens to be like a medical document or a bill that has been given to, to that particular person. The, the, the doctor, what the doctor is saying is going on in your system. When you read that thing, you begin to cry. But the Lord will say, whose report will you believe? Amen. Whose report will you believe? Will you believe the report of the doctor or will you believe my report? Come on, come on. Whose report will you believe? Now the report of the doctor is the fact. But the report of God is the truth. Bible says let God be true and let all men be liars. Whose report are you believing this one? Yes, they've diagnosed you that the cancer is there, but whose report will you believe? According to the books of God, you are not a cancer patient because by his stripes you were. No, you are, but you were. It's a past tense. It has already happened. Yeah. All you need to do is to believe in that word. Yeah. Hallelujah. All you need to do is to believe in that word. By his stripes, we were healed. So we are meant to walk in the healings of God. Yeah. But when the devil lies to you, then you will be like, I'm sick. Let the weak say, I am strong. I am strong. And let the poor say, so even though there is nothing in your bank account, the Lord is saying, profess that I am rich. Because you see, your confession becomes your possession. Yes, what you confess is what you receive. So if you continue saying, I am sick, you're going to be sick. If you continue saying that I am poor, you will still be poor. But when you change your confession, your possession is also going to change. How hard it is to change your confession. It is not hard. It is not hard. Huh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So the church was going the wrong direction. The prophet of God was going the wrong direction. And Bible said, God brought a storm. I tell you that at Joppa, there are many ships. Many will be going to Tarshish. But Jonah's ship alone was intercepted by God. So you see, everybody can be doing the same thing. But the moment you try to do it, yep, everybody will be dancing to the same music. <laughs> but when you decide to put on your dancing shoe to dance to that same music, then there is trouble. 
like, why? Everybody is doing it. Nothing seems to be happening. Why is it that I'm the only person who did it and all eyes are on me? Hallelujah. Huh. It's because God has interest in you. Let them do it. But God will not allow you to do it. Hallelujah. Let them do it. But he will not permit you. You in particular, he will not permit you to do it. Because you are trying to put your hand in God's pocket. You are trying to bring shame to God and he will not allow that. Ah, he allowed his son to come to die to redeem you. Right? So that the whole world will be saved. And now you have been delivered. He wants to use you to deliver others and you say, I'm going the wrong way. No, God will say, no, not today. I'm not going to allow this. So everybody will be eating the same uh, food the moment you taste it. Then your mouth is burning. <laughs> Hallelujah. We all eat, we got different tastes, but you alone. You'll be like, uh-uh. uh-uh. No. It's a sign that the eye of the Lord is upon you. Amen. So God brought a storm. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Not every storm is caused by the devil. Hear this. And you see, God will continue to bring the storm until you come to realization. And you come back home. The moment you come back home, then the storm will be over. So you control the storm in your life. Are you going to surrender to God? Or you will continue running? The more you run, the more the storm follows you. But the moment you surrender, that will be the end of the storm. It is your choice. It is your choice, and God will not choose for you. Like I said, I know the plans that I have for you, but he will not plan for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Huh. You know your destiny has already been chosen by God. Yeah. But your destiny is not guaranteed. Right. Your destiny has already been chosen by God, but it's not guaranteed. You have a role to play to get to that destination. Okay, where were we? Good. Now, the Bible says, verse 5. Then the mariners were afraid. You see, then the house members were afraid. See, that is why I'm saying that some of the decisions you make, don't say it is my own decision. Now, Jonah took that wrong decision and went into the boat. And there were a lot of mariners, there were a lot of travelers in it. And his stupidity, excuse me to say, brought judgment to the people in the ship. Who are the Jonas in your life? Who are the Jonas in your life? Because these Jonas, they creep into our lives unnoticed. These Jonas are unfriendly friends. These Jonas pretend to be angels of light. These Jonas pretend to be destiny helpers, but they are destiny killers. These Jonas pretend to be fire lighters, but they are fire killers. Yeah. Who are the Jonas in your life? Because this is the thing. Until you identify your Jonah, that storm will not cease in your life. The mariners were afraid and cried every man unto his God. Look at the gods, the, 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 the lower gene. So these are people who don't know Jehovah. Yeah. They know lesser gods, the, those who serve rules, who sell uh, rocks and those kind of, they were calling on them. They were not calling on Jehovah. Even they, they believe in their God. The gods who have eyes but they cannot see. The gods who have legs but they are immobile. The gods who have ears but they cannot hear. The gods that need to be carried. <laughs> but we serve a God who carries us on his shoulders. Yeah. Yeah. Right. They were calling on these inferior gods. And cast forth where that the sheep uh, that, that the sheep oh, where were we? that were in the sheep. In other words, they, 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 they throw some of the cargoes into the sheep. Now, this is somebody who is traveling. You have all your luggage. You are on board. These are important luggage for you. That is why you pack all of them. All right? And now, <laughs> everything in your bag is very important. Like, like right now, let me use a now example. See, there are things in your bags. There are things in your purses which are very important for you. Right? But, but when the storm came, they decided to throw them into the sea. 
You see, at the moment, that thing was important. But in another season, it's no longer important. In the season of the storm, we know what is necessary in our lives. You know, when the COVID came, they were saying essential jobs. I didn't know some jobs were essential and others were not essential until that storm came. So the storm reveals the essentials in life. Because you, 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 you took your bag right into the car. But right now you are throwing the bag away. So he's telling you that life is more essential than the content in the bag. Right. Some of us, we are carrying that bag along. And it seems that thing is essential. But at the face of the stone, you will know that this is not essential in my life. We are carrying bitterness along. We are carrying unforgiveness along. We are carrying backbiting along. We are, we are like, like going to a brother and slandering another brother. We are carrying all those things along. We think it's important. But at the face of the storm, you will tell that these things are not important. Yeah. Some of us, we are too heavy. <laughs> because we have harbored a lot of bitterness in us. The Bible said they throw those things so that the sheep will be lightened. Because the sheep is too heavy. We are, we, are, we are too heavy that God is not able to work in and through us. Our tubes, our veins, our marrows, our blood, they are, they are all clotting, they are all choked. Therefore, the word of the Lord is not able to have impact in our body. We are too heavy. No. Hallelujah. Perhaps if we can lighten ourselves and allow the spirit of the Lord to elevate us, the will of the Lord will be seen in our lives. What are you heavy with? What is it that is in your life that you need to let it go? 